Snake, are you all right? Yeah, just barely. What the hell were all those hornets? Most likely that was the pain, one of the cobras. I figured as much. Are they tracking me? I don't know. The cobras only take orders from the boss. Not even Volgan knows what they're really up to, so I don't know anything about them either. No kidding. I'll try and dig up as much as I can about them. You just focus on moving ahead. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie swamp. And Snake, be careful. That cave... ...is pitch dark inside. Good. I did remember to tell you then. <sighs> if it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. Eva, where are you now? I told you, didn't I? I'm right near the Colonel. Pretty weak answer, if you ask me. I suppose you're right. Eva... Snake, I'm under orders to cooperate with you, but that doesn't mean I have to tell you everything I know. I would assume the same applies to you, too. That cave is known as Chornaya Peshara. In Russian, Chornaya Peshara means the black cave from which cold wind blows. It's a magma cavern formed millions of years ago, back when Salino Yarsk was the site of volcanic activity. The structure of the cave is pretty complex, but you should be able to find the aqueduct if you keep moving inward. Head toward the interior of the cave. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp. If it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. If it's completely dark and you need a light, go to the end of the cave. If it's completely... Snake, are you okay? Snake! Pager. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. 
Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. I see you've caught yourself a Kenyan mangrove crab. The Kenyan mangrove crab is a land-going crab. It lives in burrows dug near seashores and mangrove swamps. It's not poisonous, but it might hurt a little if it attacks you with its pinchers. Treat it with caution. Got it. So this thing must taste pretty good, huh? Why do you say must? It's a crab, isn't it? It is. And crabs are good to eat. What's so good about them? You don't like crab? Not at all. Why not? Why? How can you eat those things? They're all purple and yellow striped, and they stink like cat pee. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Don't listen to me. Let's see here. The guide says... No way. It says they're delicious. Well, if you want to eat one, then go right ahead, but count me out. I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus, a mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, but they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to... So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Right. A torch? A little primitive, but a light's a light. From what I can tell, that torch is made of white birch dipped in turpentine. It burns long, so I don't think you'll have a problem with it burning out on you. If you equip it and press the CQC button, you can use it to smack the enemy. You can also swing it around by pressing that button repeatedly. Useful when you need to clear the room of bats and stuff. With the weapon button, you can light and extinguish a torch. So make sure that thing is out if an enemy is closing in. Get used to it. The light from the torch is visible from a long way off, though. It probably goes without saying, but marching into battle with a torch in your hand is not the sanest course of action. You should only light a torch when you're someplace like a cave where you can't find your way around without a light. Yeah, I hear you. I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous Mission, but this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the Special Forces unit of Gru the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Basically, a guy with a Scorpion is not gonna miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man.
Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out. Snake, have you heard about the massacre that happened in the forest near the village of Gnezdovo? The Katyn Forest Massacre, right? During World War II, the German army came upon the bodies of 4,000 dead Polish in the forest of Katyn. Yeah, Germany blamed the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union denied it, blaming Germany in return. The truth is that Stalin ordered the NKVD to carry out the killings. And it's not just Katyn. In places like Western Ukraine and Belarus, there must have been at least 20,000 Poles in the prison camps. Why are you telling me this? Volgin was one of the people responsible. He was one of the vicious leaders behind it. Volgin was? He blamed it on a prisoner revolt to allay any fears and requested they be put to death. I've heard that Volgin even removed the blindfolds from each prisoner before he beat them to death. I knew he wasn't all there in the head, but this... Not someone you could be friends with. Go to the end of the cave. Go to the... If it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. Eva, I wanted to ask you about Ocelot. Yeah, I know. He's pretty infatuated with you, isn't he? That's not what I meant. Aren't the Ocelots an elite unit? Yeah. So how'd he get to be their commander? He can't be any older than 18 or 19. I can't believe he's already a major. I heard from the Colonel that he's been given special treatment. Special treatment? Yeah, he's the son of some legendary hero or something. No wonder he seems to have the right stuff. So who is this legendary hero anyway? Beats me. The colonel never told me. All I heard was that his mother was supposedly shot in the gut during battle, and that he was born right there with bullets whizzing past them. A pregnant woman in the middle of a battle? That's what I heard. They say that when they stitched her up, the scar was shaped like a snake. Well... That's battlefield medicine for you. What about his father, this legendary hero? He didn't tell me. I don't think Ocelot's ever met his parents. Are they dead? Maybe. I don't know. There were a lot of MIAs back then, during the last days of the war. Ocelot probably would have ended up the same way. But he was taken in and raised by Gru and Vulcan. Because he was special. That's my guess.
paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just hear that? Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep believing it? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake, I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. Tasty.
The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. The cave... I see you've caught yourself a Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. Huh? The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. But you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Maybe. I'll talk to you later, Snake. So you've got your uniform and your face paint, but that alone isn't enough to make for good camouflage. Camouflage means blending in with nature. To make your disguise complete, you've got to keep a low profile and avoid overt movements. As long as you've got the uniform and face paint working for you, and you're lying flat keeping still, you won't have to worry about being spotted from a distance. On the flip side, dancing around your enemy in perfect camo is still a dead giveaway. So if the enemy's looking for you and he's getting too close for comfort, just lay low for the time being. Go to the end of the cave and... By the way, Snake, do you have a calorie mate? Yeah. Is it any good? I haven't tried it yet. Oh. You want it? What? Do you want the calorie mate? What? What are you saying? You want it, don't you? I didn't say that. So you don't want it then? No. But if you were going to give it to me as a token of thanks for me helping you out, then of course I wouldn't refuse it. Are you on a diet? What did you say? Calorie made is supposed to be really good for losing weight. <laughs> Are you saying I'm fat? No. I'm not on a diet and I don't need one. I, I just wanted to try the taste. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Be careful with what you say. Yeah, sorry. So, is it true? Is what true? <sighs> that it's good for losing weight. Yeah. Calorie Mate provides a nutritionally balanced source of energy, and it makes counting calories easy. That's what's supposed to make it good for dieting. Oh, I see. I heard that all of the geisha in Japan use it. Geisha? Yeah. I've never heard about that. Really? Yes. I'm sure there are some geisha out there using calorie mate for diets, but I doubt all of them are using it. No, I guess not. Saving the game, Snake?
Snake, have you heard of The Last War? Nope, doesn't ring a bell. It's a Japanese movie where the world ends in a nuclear war. Tensions between East and West reach the breaking point, and before anyone can stop it, they launch the ICBMs. Humanity is wiped out by a war that no one wanted. The movie depicts that destruction from the eyes of ordinary people. Their simple daily lives are torn apart by the terrible power of a war that has nothing to do with them. Everybody's afraid of the next big war, but there's only so much that one person can do. That's why the people who have the power to stop it have to.